Sydney company director Peter Meyer began vegetable gardening two years ago for relaxation. But the garden at his home in Dural, near Sydney, is quite unconventional. He doesn't use soil. His garden depends entirely on the use of a soilless culture technique known as hydroponics. It's quite an old system of farming, but has become more accepted among backyard gardeners only in recent years. Hydroponics comes from the Greek words hydro for water and ponos for labour. And water does all the hard work in this type of gardening, with the help of a powdered nutrient made from chemicals and fertilisers. The gardener needs only to dissolve the soluble food for the plants, then stand back and watch them grow. A tap controls the flow of water and nutrient to the garden. The liquid is gravity fed to the far end of the bed and flows through a flume of small stones to the bottom of the growing medium. In this case, it's a mixture of sand, vermiculite, perlite, crushed plastic and blue metal. The growing medium does little more than support the root systems. All the food needed for plant growth is obtained from either the air or the liquid nutrient. Many civilizations have made good use of hydroponics. The Aztecs used it 5,000 years ago, and it was practiced in a primitive form by early Indian and Egyptian civilizations. Hydroponic farming was used extensively by the American army during World War II, and since then, big commercial hydroponic farms have been developed in South Africa, Europe, India, Japan, China, and America. Hydroponic gardening works by a flood irrigation recycling system. The garden is built with a slight slope, so the liquid nutrient, not absorbed by the plants or growing medium, filters to the bottom of the garden. It then flows through a pipe to the holding tank for reuse. Peter Meyer describes it as toilless gardening, but he admits to some setbacks during early experiments. I had a few problems, like for instance, I had uh, five foot growth of uh, potatoes um, in about five weeks. Unfortunately, I didn't have one particular, you know, one single potato under the ground. And I had rhubarb leaves which were that wide and about that long and they tasted revolting. But other crops like cucumbers and tomatoes and beans and lettuce uh, were just incredible. For instance, I got 230 crystal apple cucumbers from a couple of plants in a tiny corner of a bed in 10 weeks. And um, as far as tomatoes grow, uh, go, I've grown um, tomatoes uh, 14 and a half feet tall with yields of around uh, 20 pounds per plant and, and up to 30 or 40 in some cases. And some of them have weighed a pound each and the flavor's been beautiful. Hydroponic gardening does away with digging and hoeing. And because the growing medium consists largely of neutral material, there's very little disease and weed growth. The weeds that do infiltrate are easily removed. Peter Meyer experiments with many types of hydroponic gardens. This one is simply a plastic bag with holes cut in it. Other garden beds are fitted with frames over which plastic can be stretched to provide a greenhouse environment. Through all seasons, these gardens produce to maximum capacity. Uh, it's not just that they grow faster, they germinate faster too. You get larger fruit, you get more prolific cropping, uh, you can plant things closer together, uh, you have a greater resistance to disease and it's much easier to control in the growing medium. And all this adds up to about four or five times the yield of so soil overall. Can you get more than one crop a year? Oh heaven, something like lettuces I get about seven or eight crops a year. Uh, I've had tomatoes in for 12 months, they've gone right through the winter and the frosts and so forth and they're still fruiting. Uh, they've had a bit of protection but they certainly haven't been in the greenhouse or anything. Uh, Plants, if they're healthy, seem to be able to stand a greater uh, degree of, of, of heat and cold and so forth. Are there any advantages to harvesting this type of gardening? Well, dozens, really. Um, but let me give you an example. Uh, these potatoes, for instance, I put in, uh, oh, I don't know, about three months ago, and I wanted to see how they were getting on about five or six weeks ago. So I dug around them, like so, and I found they were, in fact, potatoes. And I've been doing this ever since, and every week, I take out the potatoes and I let the plant carry on growing. So we get about four or five pounds of potatoes and we don't disturb the, uh, the plant itself. Beautiful. Now all this is being done with a, a chemical mixture. A lot of the organic enthusiasts would uh, be highly critical of this. How do you feel about it? 
Uh, well, if somebody said which would you prefer to eat, uh, my chemicals or chicken manure, I'd, I'd opt for my chemicals. Uh, in fact, they're perfectly safe. Uh, one of the biggest ingredients is Epsom salts. Um, I'd, I'd say they're a good deal safer than, 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 than many of the chemicals or, or uh, uh, odds and ends that uh, somebody using an organic, organic gardener, uh, garden would use. Um, furthermore, uh, the plants all look healthy, they respond well. Uh, I'm not doing anything new. Hydroponics is well established and uh, it's been proven to be perfectly safe. And uh, if it looks good, it tastes good, I believe it is good. Peter Meyer believes hydroponic gardening has a big future in cities like Sydney and Melbourne because it's particularly suited to people living in units and townhouses with little space for normal gardens. Peter Meyer turned to hydroponics when he became fed up with working hard for low yields in soil. Now he has an abundance of vegetables and flowers. For easy access, he even has portable hydroponic beds on the patio. These, he says, could be adapted for use on a sunny home unit veranda. According to Peter Meyer, everyone has enough space to garden the hydroponic way. These sausage-shaped plastic bags are for hanging gardens in the most restricted living area. Herbs, strawberries and even some flowers grow quite readily in holes cut into the bag of growing medium. The liquid nutrient is added through a pipe at the top. The potential of this type of agriculture is now being scientifically studied at an institute in Sussex, England. There, the latest technique utilises strips of thin plastic. The garden consists of plastic strips folded over and pegged to form a dark channel for the root systems. The seeds are planted not into soil, but into blocks of inert supporting fibre through which the roots will grow. The blocks are placed in the plastic channels with a thin film of water flowing underneath. When the plastic is pegged over the top, the roots will develop in the dark conditions they like, fed by a constant trickle of liquid nutrients. With the watering cans and sprinkler systems used in conventional glass houses, water and liquid fertilizers spill everywhere. Therefore, there's considerable wastage. In this hydroponic system, a pump reticulates a small quantity of liquid continuously, bathing the roots in a film of liquid a millimetre deep. Water consumption is dramatically reduced and there's no drying out period between waterings when the plants stop growing. Supplied with all they need, the plants grow faster than ever before. As the plants absorb the fertiliser from the water, regular tests are made to check the concentration. Now that all the fertiliser goes into the plants, less fertiliser is needed. Incredibly, Scientists have found that the plants need only one hundredth of the fertiliser used in gardens with soil. Having no soil brings other advantages too. Normally, glasshouse soil must be sterilised between crops to remove infection. Furthermore, three generations of plants can be grown side by side and produce three crops a year instead of one. The yield can be doubled again by placing small plants between mature ones. As the fruit is harvested from the older plants, the new ones grow into the space left behind. The system is now well past the experimental stage. When its value was proved, the clothes pegs were replaced with more sophisticated fasteners. Consistently, the system produced more and larger fruit, and tests indicate that even the taste is better. Following early success with tomatoes, the scientists of the Glasshouse Crops Research Institute tried it with other crops. Results show that by using less of everything, it's possible to produce more. One picture tells the story. The plant still in bud was grown the traditional way. Another planted on the same day in black plastic is already blooming. 